Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today and not looking at a component of the system we're building, but really take a more philosophical view uh, before we get into some details on what we need to design a system. So this is essentially the spectrophotometer system that we're going to be building in the class. We have a light source. We collect the light, filter it. The photons excite a sample, and by excite, I mean they're absorbed, and the energy goes to raising electrons to an upper state. As those electrons fall back down, they fluoresce. We collect the fluorescence light, filter it, detect it, which converts the photons detected to an electrical signal, which is amplified and filtered, and uh, we tell something about our sample that way. And we're going to get into the details of designing this system in a little bit, but before we do that, we need to know something about the... Uh, light that's absorbed by the sample, and more importantly, the light that's fluoresced or emitted by the sample after we excite it. Because if we don't know what wavelengths or distribution of wavelengths is filtered, is emitted by the sample, it's going to be awfully hard to design a filter. And so today we're going to be talking about diffraction gratings, which can be used in spectrometer, which is a type of filtering device that lets us understand quite a bit about the light that's emitted by the sample. And so so let's go ahead and talk about the green arrows, which are the light that's, that's emitted and fluoresced by the sample. And we want to learn something about that. And so really, if we could have our way in a perfect world, we would want some kind of filter that would probe the properties of the sample, that could look at the light that comes off. And we might want to have a filter with some center wavelength lambda naught uh, that passes some range of wavelengths, delta lambda. So only the wavelengths very close to lambda naught would be emitted. And in a perfect world, we'd be able to change that center wavelength, lambda naught, and scan it back and forth over a large range of wavelengths. So that as this filter moves and scans, we can look at all the different wavelengths and the relative intensities of the fluorescence. And in fact, there's a device called a diffraction grating, which we can combine uh, with other optical devices to do exactly this. Uh, diffraction grating is essentially a device that takes light composed of multicolored, that's represented by this black arrow here, although technically it should be a white arrow, since if you combine all the colors of light, you get white light. And different wavelengths go in different directions. So the red wavelengths sort of come up this way, the yellow wavelengths go at a different angle, the the shortest or purple wavelengths in the visible spectrum would go in that direction. And in order to design this ideal optical filter, there are a couple of ways we could go about it. Um, one would be uh, to simply scan a screen with a hole in it back and forth. So when it's at the top, it's looking at red wavelengths. And when it's at the bottom, it's looking at purple wavelengths. And the size of the hole in the screen would essentially, uh, so there's the size of the hole would select our value of delta lambda. If we have a small hole, we get a narrow range of wavelengths. If we increase the size of the hole, we get a larger range of wavelengths. Another way to do it, and the way that's actually done, is to actually tilt our diffraction grating. So we scan over a range of angles and keep our slit in a fixed position and, and scan our range of wavelengths that way. And if you hunt for diffraction grating on the internet, as I did, you'll come up with a lot of information. There's more in the reading assignment you have today. And you find that, that the, there is a relationship between the angle the light hits the diffraction grating, um, the spacing between lines on the grating that we're calling D here, the wavelength that's given by this equation right here. And essentially, uh, N is an integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, minus 1, minus 2, and so on and so forth. And for given angles of incidence, beta, as you can see here, that's the angle off the norma, normal for the light incidence. And the wavelengths are diffracted off of this at angle alpha, as shown here. And that the angle alpha is essentially calculated knowing beta and d and lambda, assuming an n. And usually we take n is equal to 1 or n is equal to minus 1. And of course, the way this device works is the light comes in and hits the grating. Uh, most of the light reflects, but some of the light is diffracted as a function of color, and we can collect that light and look at it on some kind of detector or a screen with a hole in it. And uh, this is the site that I got this image from. To understand the grating in a little bit more detail, uh, we can think of the rays of light coming in, and the grating is essentially a, a, a 
series of reflective lines or a series of, of, of small slits in a screen, and we know that light is going to basically hit this and be emitted as a point source. So by Huygens' principle, it's going to come out with spherical wave fronts. So let's see, it's coming out in spherical wave fronts like this with Huygens' principle, comes out like this, and so on and so forth. And in the direction that all the wave fronts that come out in spheres add up is the direction of diffraction. Of course, the spacing between the wave fronts is dependent on wavelength, and you get the wavelength dependent that way. Although you're going to have to take a class on wave optics to really understand this in all its mathematical detail. Um, but this is the general equation that's given. And again, the angle alpha is given by the angle incidence. Um, and the angle beta is the angle diffracted, although these two things don't match up necessarily. Uh, so how do we go ahead and build a device out of this? We have some kind of light source. Uh, the light comes in. Uh, usual spectro spectrometer or device where this is done collects the light through a series of mirrors. The grating rotates through some angle, and as we rotate the angle, uh, different colors are transmitted through the slit of the detector. But of course, this being the electronic age, instead of a single detector and a slit, um, there are other ways to do it. You can get rid of that and have, in fact, a detector array, which our spectrometer that you've used, the ocean optics spectrometer, does. So you detect all of these colors of light simultaneously. And essentially, for the system we're doing, we excite our sample. And rather than looking at the source, we look at the light that's emitted or transmitted through the sample. And this is essentially how a diffraction grating works, how a spectrometer works. And uh, I want to show you a picture of a very large diffraction grating, much larger and more expensive than we'll be using, so you know what these things look like in real life. In fact, you don't see the slits. They're far too small to see. They're on the order of a wavelength. But you do see the multiple colors. So if you ever see something that looks like this, where reflective light is broken up into a rainbow pattern, uh, it acts as a diffraction grating. And one very inexpensive example of a diffraction grating is simply a CD or a DVD. And you've seen those, those colored rays of light. And in fact, in class, we'll be analyzing a CD, treating it like a diffraction grating.